the ZX Spectrum. Released in 1982 on the 23rd of April and developed by Sinclair Research of the UK, it consisted of a Zilog Z80A processor, a popular processor in the 1980s used in competing products such as the Amstrad CPCs and ColecoVision. The Nintendo Game Boy actually used a clone of the Z80 manufactured by Sharp. The ZX Spectrum was manufactured by a joint venture between Sinclair of the UK and Timex of the US. The factory was located in Dundee and was already manufacturing the ZX81, which Sinclair had requested Timex to manufacture. The ZX Spectrum's most significant change compared to its predecessor was the introduction of a colour display. After all, the processor was basically the same Zilog Z80, just a higher spec. Only a year later, the BBC Micro was released from the infamous Acorn Computers, the company that laid the foundations for what we know today as ARM Holdings, and the licensor of almost every single processor in every single smartphone. Clive Sinclair is known to have had rivalry with Acorn Computers, which erupted in the early 1980s over the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC for short, computer literacy programme. When both Acorn and Sinclair pitched their products to the computer programme, the contract was awarded to Acorn to manufacture the well-known BBC Micro. The main reason for this, in the words of the producer of the TV programme at the time, was I would have been very reluctant for the BBC to sell something like the Sinclair, because it is so limited. The Sinclair cannot be expanded. It is fundamentally a throwaway consumer product. So it's fair to say that Sinclair's line of products were not the most powerful or flexible even by the standards of the time. Remember that the Commodore 64 was released only a few months after the ZX Spectrum. And for the time, the Commodore 64 was a commercial and technological revolution for consumer IT. Of course, two years after the release of the ZX Spectrum was the equally infamous Amstrad CPC 464. And that sold 3 million units in just 6 years. Back to the Spectrum though, the improvements of the product over its predecessor included a faster load and save cassette interface, a hardware driven TV raster generator, this means that the process of generating video did not fall to the ULA like the ZX81 and had the effect of improving overall performance. The program language of the ZX Spectrum is basic. It was a standard language of many of the consumer computers of the day. Sinclair Basic was first used on the ZX80 in 1979, but was adapted for use on the ZX81 and the ZX Spectrum. It was developed by a company in the UK called Nine Tiles and run by a man called John Grant. The company still owns the rights to the ZX operating system and still have a website online although they have moved on to communications and networks after their involvement in the ZX basic development. Another person who was involved in the development of the Sinclair ZX operating system was Steve Vickers, who joined Nine Tile in 1980, after the ZX80 had been developed, and continued work on the firmware for the ZX81. Steve Vickers retired from his work as a university lecturer in 2018, but still has some involvement at the university. There were only 88 keywords available in Sinclair Basic, and it was a first generation unstructured basic, meaning that line numbers had to be used to identify the sequence of the code, rather than structured or object oriented basic which allowed for the program functions and subroutines to be called and greater access to the machine's operating system. Wikipedia lists at least 1,782 games for the ZX Spectrum, which, considering the device is fairly simple, is quite an extensive list. Most of these games were developed well into the 1990s, 
with some independent developers still creating games for the ZX Spectrum in the last 10 years. But in 1984, a young 18-year-old from England completed development of the ZX Spectrum's most iconic and popular game of all time, and the last game he would release for the ZX Spectrum. Jet Set Willy. Jet Set Willy was actually a sequel of a game built by the same developer, Matthew Smith, called Manic Miner. Matthew wasn't new to developing games and had already been developing games for the TRS-80 and VIC-20 as a teenager. He received his TRS-80 at the age of 13 for a Christmas present and a few years later acquired a VIC-20 before finally being offered a ZX Spectrum for free by Bugbyte Software in return for the development of a game called Sticks. 